Do you wanna know what happens when there's a dispute between the buyer and the seller doing a real estate transaction and they can't work it out? Check out this episode of Tom's Take. I'm gonna tell you how mediation works and what it means for consumers in real estate transactions. This is Tom's Take, I'm Tom Tool. Thanks for tuning in as always. This week I am talking about what happens when there's a dispute between the buyer and the seller and they can't work it out, they can't come to an agreement. So let me go a little deeper on this. Any, any contract has two parties, the buyer and the seller. They're in that to complete the sale of a home. And sometimes there's things that happen that may be considered default, but the parties can't work it out and they're not willing to sign off on a resolution. Typically, the resolution is releasing deposit money. So what happens when there's an issue? That's the big question here. So mediation is run by the Board of Realtors, and when these disagreements come up, usually it's for two reasons. One, there's a question of who's entitled to the deposit, or two, there was a lack of disclosure, and after the transaction was over, facts come out, things come out about the property, and maybe someone wouldn't have moved ahead had they known that beforehand. So that's usually the reason behind mediation. So then I go to paragraph 27 of the Pennsylvania Agreement of Sale, talks about mediation where buyer and seller will submit all disputes or claims that arise from the agreement, including deposit money, to mediation. And mediation is required to go to first before initiating legal proceedings. So you can't just go and sue somebody right away and in my opinion, from a professional practical side, staying out of court and out of lawsuits is gonna be a time saver, it's gonna be a lot more efficient, and it's gonna cost a lot less money. So that's why mediation comes up. It's run by the Board of Realtors. How it works is that there's a neutral third party, so you don't need a lawyer. You're entitled to a lawyer, you can bring a lawyer, a lot of people do, but you don't need a lawyer, and you can go and explain what happened uninterrupted. The buyer and seller have to agree to mediation, so it's gotta be bought into by all parties. And once that happens, they have to agree on a third party neutral mediator who's gonna hear both sides and try to help them work everything out. These decisions are non-binding, but what it does is it saves a lot of this frivolous nonsense that comes up when people threaten to sue, threaten to take action, and there's no really no claim against that, no legitimate claim. What it also does is it helps people who have a legitimate issue try to work it out because the agreement of sale is pretty clear, it's pretty black and white. It tells you what happens in certain situations, so it saves a lot of time. Typically these mediation hearings only last between an hour and a half to three hours versus a lawsuit or something else that can go on for a long time. So more efficient, more economical, over deposit money or lack of disclosure, and it helps you get to a resolution a lot quicker. So if you've got a question about this, I just gave you kind of the overview here, and again, the big requirement is you can't go to litigation right away. You have to go to mediation first if you're the party with the complaint. That's what the agreement of sale says. So if you got questions about this, you want to know more, ping me on social. You got all my information. Otherwise, we'll be back next week with more great content here on Top Stake. Thanks for watching.